In your car, listen to Newswatch 16 on WKRZ AM 1340. Proud to serve Northeastern and Central Pennsylvania. This is WNEP 16, the news station. Now, Nolan Johannes, Karen Hart, Pilot Jack Rulin in Skycam 16, Chief Meteorologist Tom Clark, and Joe Zone on sports. This is News Watch 6. PG&W is planning more tests tomorrow to see whether uncontaminated water can be piped into even more communities in the geodiocese area. At a news conference today, PG&W announced it will begin tests tomorrow in part of Exeter Borough, West Pittston, Old Forge, and Jenkins Township. But while those tests are going on, people in those areas and Taylor Borough could see dirty water. About the possibility of disturbing uh, uh, pressures and uh, creating some turbidity, dirty water in uh, portions of Wilkesbury and Plains. PG&W has already done tests in most other communities on the west side of the Susquehanna, and sometime soon they'll be checking the pipes in Pittston, Durier, Avoca, and Muzik. Officials in Centralia are facing a different problem. Businessmen aren't taking advantage of federal money to move away from the mine fire. News War 16's Dan Fiorucci says the Small Business Administration has lots of money, but few takers. You'd think that if the federal government had millions in loans to hand out, people would line up for it. But here in Centralia, where runaway mine fires are forcing an evacuation of the town, people aren't. Even though the Small Business Administration has millions in loans and loan guarantees available. We are what is referred to as a lender of last resort. And SBA officer Richard Spinici is the man in charge of Centralia loans. He says it's hard to understand the lack of response. And I think maybe they are just simply simply, like I said, apprehensive about the, uh, the, what the government promises them. They're suspicious of you? Basically, yes. Go on, Mrs. Burge. But some of Centralia's yeah, less suspicious business people have walked into the SBA that? temporary office yeah. at the National <laughs> Bank and have ended up satisfied. I think it's wonderful. Very helpful at this time. Right. What would happen if uh, they weren't available? Would it be tough to relocate? Uh, it would be almost impossible, I think. The point is, there may be a few dozen businessmen in Centralia for whom these loans could make all the difference in the world. What the SBA is trying to do is hook up all those businesses with all that money. So far, they're having only limited success. Dan Fiorucci, Newswatch 16, Centralia. Pennsylvania's Workmen's Compensation Act came under a fire today before three federal judges in Philadelphia. In fact, sections of the act were declared unconstitutional. The judges ruled today that an employer or insurance firm cannot cut a disabled worker's compensation without a full-scale hearing. The attack on the law came when some workers' benefits had been automatically cut after a doctor said they were able to resume their jobs. News War 16 continues with proposed changes in education coming from Harrisburg. We'll have reaction from the public and private schools. Plus, later on, we'll head west to Punxsutawney with Mike Stevens for Phil's prediction. PM Magazine, live from Big Boulder tonight. In Harrisburg, a proposed state law, if approved, would give the legislature control over what is being taught in private schools. Now the state education department has that responsibility. The bill says what basic courses must be taught in the non-public schools, but prohibits the state from interfering with content of the courses, faculty or staff, or disciplinary requirements. Private schools would also have to promise a 180-day school year. To graduate from private high schools, the bill would require students to have four years of English and three years each of science, math, and social science. The intent of the bill is to have elected officials set education policy rather than appointed education officials. Those proposed changes in education are not sitting very well with some private schools in our area. Newswatch 16's Kathy Bellich reports there's concern that the state may push too far. These first graders are learning everything most first graders learn, plus a little more. Their students at the Northeastern Christian School in Scranton, a non-public school. What they learn is getting more attention from state lawmakers, and that concerns the principal here. If there is a climate out there that does worry me, and uh, it's not just Pennsylvania, it's a lot of states that are making these kinds of moves 
toward uh, tightening the grasp that the state has on the non-public school. Right now, non-public schools can choose just about any book from any stack and use it in the classroom. But another concern is that someday that won't be the case. That someday, for example, they'll have to use this book to teach biology, but won't be allowed to use this book to teach history. Scranton Preparatory School is a Jesuit high school. The principal here doesn't want to give the state the ruling hand, but says it's too soon to worry about that. I think there's a temptation maybe to see it in, in two dramatic uh, terms, you know, at this point of, of the state seizing uh, control over church schools. Uh, I don't see it as dramatically as that right now. The principal here at the Northeastern Christian School in Scranton says that the root of all this concern is that the non-public schools want to preserve the freedom that made this country a melting pot and makes it work. Kathy Bellish, Newswatch 16, Scranton. There are similar changes being tossed around in Harrisburg that would apply to public schools. Newswatch 16's Mark Davis reports it appears public schools would welcome those changes. Carol Reines has been teaching in the Wilkesbury area schools for more than 20 years. And in those years of education, she's been very active in issues concerning improvement of the schools. As someone who deals with education daily, Carol Reines sees possible state lawmaker involvement in the curriculum as a real help. If you're responsible for the funding of schools, then you certainly ought to be responsible for mandating what is taught in those schools. Not how it's taught, but what is taught. Keith Geiger is a nationally known educator who shares that feeling. Geiger's in town speaking out about the need for improving our educational system. He sees the need for involvement, but not intrusion, by state lawmakers. We want the help of those people who can help us improve the schools. When it comes to deciding what's going to go on in the classroom, when it comes to decide what textbooks are going to be used and so on, I think those people who are in the classroom are in the best position to make those decisions. The people in Harrisburg who have the curriculum controls right now, the State Department of Education and the State Board of Education say they really don't mind the lawmakers taking over the curriculum controls. I'm told that the state legislature had the ultimate say anyway in any curriculum matters. The new laws, if they become effective, will just put that control in writing and make it a little bit more strict. Mark Davis, Newswatch 16, Wilkesbury. Our chief meteorologist Tom Clark is next with his forecast. 100% mm -hmm. sun so far for February mm -hmm. almost, if not already. <laughs> yeah. Beautiful day. Yeah. I saw my shadow today. How about you? Yeah, we were afraid to look. Actually. Yeah, <laughs> so was I. However, <laughs> my satellite picture shows a change coming in the weather, and we'll take a closer look when we come back. Hello, I'm Jimmy Cephalo of the Miami Dolphins. I grew up in Pittston, and I love this area of Pennsylvania, but I don't like what's happening to some of our youngsters in this area and throughout the country, drugs and alcohol. Drugs and alcohol make you think that you're stronger, faster, and smarter, but they actually make you slower, less coherent, and weaker. Stay away from them. Do yourself a favor. They're only trouble. Close to 200 grocery clerks at two area supermarkets are threatening to strike at midnight. Members of the United Food and Commercial Workers Union at ShopRite Markets in Kingston and Stroudsburg have been working under an expired contract for over a month. At last word, negotiations are continuing in Philadelphia. The union locals will be meeting tonight at 9 in both Wilkesbury and Stroudsburg to decide if they'll walk out at midnight. Both sides involved in a former labor dispute will be sitting down at the bargaining table tonight. Nanticoke teachers and the school board will meet tonight at the John S. Fine High School at 7 to talk about a contract for next school year. Let's talk about the weather, shall yeah, we? Pleasant talks because of pleasant sights today, Tom. What a day. You know, it's even comfortable outside at this hour. Lost a lot of snow today with that sunshine outside. And overhead now we have mostly clear skies. It's quite a nice evening. The temperature looks like this under those skies in this backyard. Like I said, a semi-comfortable now, 35 degrees. The humidity is 51%. The wind is coming up from the south now at 10 miles per hour. And the barometer is holding steady, but soon to be falling. The range in temperature, look at that. Well, that's about four degrees above the normal high this afternoon. It felt good, but look at that low this morning, a frigid four above zero. But the record of 11 below, set back in 1961, still stands. The record high of 55 set just one year ago today. And that shot there was uh, sunrise in Puxatawney, Pennsylvania this morning. And of course, Phil saw his shadow, just some vapor trails in the sky out that way. And I guess the first thing Phil may have said to himself was, uh, Tom Clark won't be very happy about this. 
And see, Phil is smart because he knows that I stand outside to give the weather. So that was the first thing that came to his mind when he saw a shadow, which means, of course, six more weeks of bad winter weather. Well, let's go to the satellite picture and see what's coming up. There is a cloud line there, a cold front, and up and down that line as I speak, rain is breaking out. Some rain now from uh, Michigan, Indiana, Illinois, down to about uh, Louisiana, and this line is moving in towards Pennsylvania, and some rain is going to break out here during the day tomorrow. That front will move offshore, and then the jet stream winds will allow colder air to come down from Canada, and it looks like we go back below normal temperature-wise through the weekend and early next week. So, let's take a look at that forecast for tonight. A dry night. It'll be mild compared to last night. Look at the temperatures. Only about 21 to low up in West Damascus, 25 in South Wilkesbury. You're low tonight. 25 in South Tamaqua, about 25 in Lewisburg, up there in East Troy, Bradford County. You're low, 24 degrees. Boy, some places last night got down to zero and uh, much warmer tonight, comparatively speaking. How about tomorrow? We, well, clouding up in the morning, the rain begins between about 1 and 4 p.m. So get set for that. Maybe even a little bit of wet snow could mix in tomorrow evening, but I do not expect anything heavy at this point. 41 to high in White Sox, 43 in Dunmore, 42 in Roarsburg, Columbia County, 42 to high in Jersey Shore, and in Frackville, the high tomorrow, 43 degrees. And a big hello goes out tonight to all the fourth graders I spoke to at the Frackville Elementary School this afternoon. We spoke about weather balloons and weather satellites and thunderstorms, and I think everybody learned a little something. A special thanks goes out to Mrs. Deborah Sands, who was nice enough to invite me down. How about the health watch tomorrow? Reflexes average, the high humidity, resistance to aches and pains will be low. So don't exercise too hard tomorrow. Okay, the rain coming in tomorrow afternoon, maybe a little wet snow tomorrow night, nothing too severe. 42 the high tomorrow, and then 36 on Saturday, some light snow or flurries on Sunday, 27 for the high, and a cold day on Monday. So Karen and Nolan, a dry start tomorrow, and then a wet finish. I'll take the 42 degrees, but the rain and all yeah. that mess, Tom. Well, gee, can't yeah. you do something about that? I'll talk to Puxatani Phil. <laughs> yeah. six, okay. six more weeks, right? <laughs> yeah. Thanks, Thanks Tom. Tom. Joe's own is coming up next with the Sports Star of the Week. Plus, the newest Tar Heel, Dave Potson, getting in tune in Chapel Hill. Everything from white water to black powder to beavers, biking, and bows, from copperheads to whitetails to casting, calling, and crows. You'll see stalking fish, fixing poles, rainbow trout, and snowy owls, setting traps, drilling holes, earthworms, and waterfowl. Whether you're a fan of the eagles, browns, bears, or giants, or of Joe and Stan and the Mountain Man, or some Tom Duck, or Harry, watch hiking, frying, riding, tying, skiing, and flying on Pennsylvania Outdoor Life, Saturday at 7. Joe's own promised us we'd see Dave Popson in action, and we're looking forward to it, Joe. Yeah, we're going to see him play some basketball today. Yesterday, part one in our series on Bishop O'Reilly's Dave Popson, who's now a freshman at North Carolina, we talked about the big adjustment in the classroom. Popson seems to have made that, but what about leaving the Wyoming Valley Conference to play in the toughest college basketball conference in the country? That's what we talk about tonight in part two. to North Carolina on a basketball scholarship means a four-year commitment to basketball excellence. And this is where most of that commitment will be played out. Carmichael Auditorium, a neat 10,000-seat facility where the Tar Heels practice and play all of their home games. And where Dave Popson will hopefully develop and perfect the skills that brought him to North Carolina in the first place. Those talents made Popson a dominating force on the high school level of Bishop O'Reilly. But here at North Carolina, where day in and day out, the competition is the best there is. Popson is considered just another player. What's so different about playing basketball in college on the Division I level compared to playing basketball at Bishop O'Reilly or the University of Scranton or whatever? I, I would have to say the level of concentration. you got to keep it all, all the time. You know, in high school, you can let down, let your, you know, your, your, your talents flow out. Mm -hmm. But here, you know, the talents are pretty much equal. And you got to, you know, if you have more concentration, you, you'll probably come out on top. 
I think there's more to work for a big man than uh, six six and under. You got to learn to anticipate teammate shot and get inside. You have to learn to pin. You have to learn to keep the ball up. Uh, you have to uh, defensively. There's so much to learn because they were primarily a zone team in high school. And we play man to man and scramble defense. So the adjustment is difficult, but Popson is fortunate in that he's learning the college game from one of the best big men in the country, All American Sam Perkins. Perkins and Popson work together in practice, and in games, Popson is Perkins' backup. Well, I, I really try to set example by in practice. Uh, he, he usually goes against me all, all the time in practice, and I try to make it difficult for him the best way I know how. And he's learned, and he's becoming you know, more adapt to uh, players, myself, anybody we play against now. Sam doesn't come out of the game very often, so he isn't playing as much as I'm sure he'd like, but he's learning playing against him every day in practice, and uh, certainly has all the tools to be an outstanding college player. Coach Smith's words are reassuring, especially to a freshman with big potential and with a back injury that has slowed his progress so far just a bit. It's painful. Is it something that you're concerned about? Or you wouldn't classify it like a, a ligament or something like that? No, it, it's no broken bone or anything. It's, you know, I went to see the trainer and everything's just muscle and just got to suck it up and be tough. So David plays with the pain that is part of the game. Another part of the game, at least at North Carolina, is waiting. Waiting for a chance to show off some of that talent. David is hopeful his wait is a short one. David's playing a waiting game. He's not used to sitting, you know, and we'll talk about that tomorrow in part three. A lot of people ask, what qualifies someone for Sports Star of the Week? Well, what we're really looking for is the kid or individual who had that once-in-a-lifetime performance. We don't always get that person, but we do get a lot of athletes like Ray Edlock, and one way or another, he makes a big difference on the team. It's been a season full of injuries and walkouts at Reserve County Community College, but still they continue to win, thanks in large part to Ray Yedlock. Yedlock, the team's leading scorer, put together 26, 27, and 30-point games last week. It's the, the team, they're really looking uh, for me inside, and they're really passing the very well. And uh, just uh, have your good nights and bad nights, I guess. Severely undermanned, there are just seven players on the LCCC team these days. Yedlock has emerged as the team's driving force. In high school, I guess uh, I was more, not that much of a dominating player. I had Mickey Banus and all the other guys to, to play behind. But here it's different because there is not really a star to, to look, look to. It's just uh, the five, of, the six of us now. Ray Edlock, the glue, if you will, holding things together at Luzerne County Community College and the WNEP TV Sports Star of the Week. Sports Star runners up Barry Francisco of Bloomsburg, Brian Layton of Kings, Sean Pfeiffer of Wallen Paw Pack, and Art Parker of Troy. Big night of high school wrestling tonight, and we'll have it right here. Okay, okay. okay. I'm Mike Stevens. Join me on the Pennsylvania Road on Newswatch 16. The lure of the Pennsylvania Road took Mike Stevens to Punxsutawney today to the top of a bitter cold gobbler's knob. Mike has Groundhog Phil's prediction plus a new twist. There aren't many things I know that will draw as many people out to the woods on a bitter cold morning. Punxsutawney Phil does. Look at them. This year's crowd even had an international touch. And the media, my golly, you think someone was holding a press conference with three eats. Nope, we were all waiting for the men of the inner circle to enter and for the 97th year, ask Phil about the winter ahead. I don't think anyone was happy with what he forecast. Punks Tony, Phil has indeed seen a shadow that indicates six more weeks of mild winter weather are still ahead of us. Just well, despite Phil's prognostication of more bone-chilling weather to come, there was news here today to warm the hearts of all. I want to introduce you to Punxsy Phil. <laughs> Phil has a mate, Philomena, donated by the Philadelphia Zoo. Nothing but the best for Phil. The groundhog who forecasts the weather is entitled to it, don't you think? Has Philomena consented to the union? Yes, she has. And are they prepared to undertake their duties and obligations? Yes, they have. They well, to me. All right, well, who, who gives uh, Philomena to uh, this union? 
To make it all proper, Phil and Philomena were officially joined. Phil took it okay, but Philomena? Eh, you know how brides are on their wedding day. Philomena are here after Groundhog Mates. <laughs> Philomena, still clinging to club president Jim Means, was hustled away right after. Their honeymoon delayed a bit by a personal appearance she had to make. So Phil has seen his shadow, and that of course means six more weeks of winter. Of course, with the arrival of his new mate, there are some folks around here thinking he'll be warm enough to it all. I'm Mike Stevens, Newswatch 16, on the Pennsylvania Road in Punxsutawney. I was a little temperamental on my wedding day, too. You know, all the excitement. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine, right? <laughs> Young Philly's very frisky. That's the way it is. What are you going to do? <laughs> and that's our report for now. Be sure to join us tonight on the update when we'll be taking another trip on the Pennsylvania Road to find out just how Punxsutawney Phil and Philomena are spending their honeymoon. Not too many details, though. Okay, I For promise. the team, thanks for being with us. Enjoy your evening. Good night. We'll see you on the update. <laughs>